Hello, my name is Robert Wunderlich. I'm a product manager with Oracle Fusion Middleware, focusing on Oracle SOA Suite and Oracle Service Bus. Today, we're going to talk about pipeline templates with Oracle Service Bus, and we'll have a demonstration. So let's talk about pipeline templates within Service Bus, and also the placeholders that we use in them. A pipeline template in Service Bus is a structure that we use to build prototypes, and we can use that template to create other pipelines. The nice thing about Service Bus pipeline templates is that we can create a structure for common activities such as logging, error handling, and alerting, and more, and we can use that throughout all of our services. We can take certain components of that template and we can lock it from the ultimate user of that template so that that template continues to live through the services that use it. So if we need to make a change, such as add an additional logging step, we can do that, and that will carry through all of the services. We can also put placeholders into those templates, and those are the areas where the users of our templates can go ahead and add their own logic. And so the logic of the template will work around the logic that the user puts in when they use it. There are two ways to create a template. We can generate the template from an existing pipeline, or we can create a template from scratch. New pipelines can then be generated from that template, and a derived pipeline is considered concrete. It can be linked, or it can be unlinked. A linked pipeline takes the changes from the template, meaning that once we've created the pipeline from the template, if we make a change to that template, they'll be carried through to the pipeline. Let's go ahead and go into a demonstration so we can take a look to see how this works. Here we are in JDeveloper 12C and we're working with Oracle Service Bus. What we see here is an overview of a simple payment validation service. In 12C, we use JDeveloper for both Service Bus development and SOA development. This is a simple service that receives a SOAP-based message to validate a credit card. It passes through a pipeline or split join and goes to a back-end service. We want to play around with pipeline templates, and so we're going to create one and see how it works. And We're just going to do it all within this project so that we can see the functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click this pipeline and go to my service bus menu and say Generate Pipeline Template. So now I'm going to give my pipeline template a name, and I'll call it Validate Payment, and that works for me. Now I'll go to my next screen. This will be a SOAP-based interface, and I'll leave that as is. You'll notice that the template screen looks a little differently. This is not a standard pipeline, but this is a template from which we can generate pipelines. It looks very much or almost exactly like the pipeline that it was generated from, except the background has this grid form. There's a couple things to look at when we look at these uh, pipeline templates. We have all of the standard functions, but we also have these placeholders, and we can use those. So let's try out a couple things here. First and foremost, let's go ahead and put in uh, a pipeline pair. And I'm going to go ahead and just take a logging option, and I will put that into this pair. Now, I'm not going to set the logging option. I just wanted to use a simple service that we didn't have to do too much configuration to save us time in this demo. But now what I want to do is I want to give my user the capability to use this template for their own use. And so I'll do a couple different things. So if I scroll up to the top here, I can see some template placeholders. So one of the things I can do is I can take this existing route node and I can actually remove it. And then I can add a placeholder for a route node. So what I'm doing in this case is I'm saying for the user that the user will define the ultimate route node or the ultimate backend business service that they will route to when they use this pipeline. Another thing I can do is I can also set some stages 
for the developer who will use this. So I can place one after my log entry. I can place another one in my response if I like. And I'll even put another log entry. So a great thing about the template here is that I can put some standardized logging in my service that will be executed around the user's functionality that they will put in when they use this template. Let me go ahead and save this template at a moment. Okay, so back to my project. Let's say I want to use this template. I can do it a couple different ways. So first and foremost, I can go and select my service bus templates, and since this is within this project, I see it right here. I can just drag it over. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this validate payment 2. And this is just for our illustrative purposes. This was a WSDL SOAP based service, so the WSDL selection is automatically selected. And I'm going to go ahead and select the WSDL that I was using before just for simplicity. And at this point, I'm not going to expose it as a proxy service. And I'll select Finish. So I've created myself a new pipeline. It was based on the template. So when I open it up, the first thing that I'll see is that I have entries from the template, but this whole area is grayed out. I can't put anything here. This is locked by the template developer. But what I can do is put my own functionality in here, in these stages boxes or these white areas. So what I'll do is I'll drag a stage in here now. And just for more simplicity, I'll go ahead and just put a log entry of my own. So essentially, I have inherited functionality from the pipeline template. And as the developer of this particular pipeline, I'm adding my own functionality. And I'll save that. Let's say for a moment, though, that the template developer determined that we needed something different in this, and so that we need to go ahead and update this template. Let's add an error handler to this. So now I have an error handler, and I'll go ahead and add another log entry to that. Keep in mind, I have not configured these log entries. This is just for illustrative purposes. So now my template looks very different from the project that used that template. Now if I go back and look at my pipeline again, those changes are reflected through into that pipeline. This is a powerful way at the architectural level or the higher level development by standards in our company to be able to define and manage requirements for our services to accelerate the development for our developers. But let's say I have a special case and I don't want changes to the upper level template to carry through. Well, for that, I can make a change here by right clicking and selecting break template link. So now once I break the link, I will not be able to make the changes to the template and carry that through to this particular pipeline that uses it. And as you can see now, the full background of this pipeline is white. I can make any change. So as the developer, I can go in and I could remove this logging option. And my project no longer matches the template in the areas where the template defined those components. If I were to go back into the template and say add another logging option in my error handler and hit save, and then go back into my pipeline and open it back up, you would see that that update did not make it into the pipeline because this pipeline is no longer connected with the template. But from what we can see here, we have huge power with pipeline templates that we can define a general structure to all of our services, we can maintain that structure, and we can accelerate the development for our developers. I hope you found this demonstration helpful that you will be able to use pipeline templates to accelerate the development within your enterprise. Come to Oracle Technology Network to check Oracle Service Bus, Fusion Middleware, and Oracle SOA Suite to learn more.